Hey, greetings again, YouTube. I don't know how interesting this will be or even how well this video is going to come out. This is kind of a, an impromptu quickie thing, but this is probably the world's newest 1581 floppy drive. Um, uh, DIY Chris uh, started doing a run of replica boards. Uh, I guess somebody in Europe was making them, I don't know, a year or two ago, but they kind of went radio silent, so uh, he... Uh, he took it upon himself to uh, to reverse engineer another board and, and put something pretty cool on the market for us. So um, I bought the kit off uh, his website. Um, you know, he's on the forums and Facebook groups and whatever else. But I was able to get the board and a lot of the LS Logic. Some of the other custom chips uh, he had available, like I think he had 6502s. Uh, I don't know if he had the floppy controller or not. But uh, at any rate, I had... Uh, uh, I, I had a 6502 laying around. I had to buy the 8K Static RAM. Uh, they were pretty cheap. I got like 10 of them for 12 bucks or something like that. Um, the floppy controllers, the, uh, what is it, WD-1770. Um, but there again, that was an off-the-shelf chip. It wasn't like super custom or anything. You know, this is a run-of-the-mill 6502. Uh, this is just a, a 64K ROM chip with uh, the regular CBM firmware as well as uh, Jiffy DOS on there and that's wired to a switch on the back of the case right so just like any other ROM mod a, a 10k resistor and a switch to pull it down as needed and uh, really the the only custom chip if you want to call it that in here is the 8520 that's the uh, the big brother to the 6526 they were uh, they're a, a CIA complex interface adapter. Um, they were used primarily in the Amiga 500s, probably some other Amigas as well. Um, I happen to have one of these spare for my Amiga 500, uh, but I thought, hell, let's throw it in the drive instead. So it's a bunch of off the uh, off the shelf uh, 74 Logic, some resistors, some caps, and, uh, and a crystal. It's it's really a, a very very simple. 8 bit 6502 computer at the end of the day. Um, for the drive itself, uh, this was a spare drive, came out of one of my Amigas. It was broken. Uh, I fixed it. Um, I, uh, I wound up putting, uh, what do you call it, one of those floppy emulators in the Amiga anyway. So this was just a spare drive I had laying around that I had repaired. So um, I think I'll do a more detailed video on how to mod a PC drive to go in here. Uh, basically, you got to flip two pins around on it, but we won't get into that right now. Just want to do a quick overview of this because somebody had kind of asked. And it looked like when I pulled this drive out, I broke one of my solder joints off the board. So we'll have to we'll have to pop pin back on there. Honestly, it's a ground. Probably won't matter because the pin next to it's also a ground, but we'll we'll still fix it so it's right anyway. Uh, the case is all 3D printed. You can get the the models off Thingiverse. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, pretty simple print, really. Um, you have the bottom of the case, the front of the case, and a mount plate to actually mount the drive into the case. You know, this will, uh, which way did he go? That way or the other way? He went that way. Go in there and mount your drive to the plate and screw the plate in. But I don't have the screws for that yet. i got to run out to Home Depot or something get some M3s tomorrow to mount the, the floppy drive to the, uh, to the little plate, but uh, you know that's it. I mean, it's it's a really simple board to build, and uh, it's uh, I'm I'm pretty pretty stoked to have a three and a half inch floppy for uh, that'll run on a, a 64 and a 128. Now for the power supply, uh, I I've never had a 1581. I don't have spare parts, power supplies, or anything laying around, but um, it, it just runs on, on 12 volt and 5 volt. It does not need uh, any kind of AC voltage or oscillator or any of that kind of junk. So, um, also on Thingiverse was a model of the original C64 power supply case. This is that same model. I just scaled down 50%. And inside of that is one of those uh, little uh, uh, buck converters. So, I uh, have a 12-volt power brick that uh, came off a broken piece of electronics I had, and this is just, what, like 12-volt, 1.2 amp. It's very, very itty-bitty little power supply. And 12-volt uh, comes into the buck converter on this side uh, from the power brick. I just pass that right along the, uh, 
the red wire here, which is feeding the 12 volt pin going into the drive. And uh, on the other side of it, you have your, your 5 volt out to feed the 5 volt side of the drive. And uh, just for grins, uh, I put a little LED on the bottom of them so it will glow through the, uh, the white part there, you know, the 3D printed Commodore logo insert. And uh, how did I have him last time? I think he fits better that way to get the LED in the right place. Yeah, actually, I did notch this out. Yeah, that's a side for the fatter cable. There we go. He went in that way. And this little guy just snaps in. I might put a, uh, on a little dab of hot glue or crazy glue or something on there to keep them together. But it does snap in fairly well. So, neat little model out there. And, uh, yeah, so it's uh, almost authentic looking with the Commodore logo. And uh, here we can make it glow. So, uh, yeah, I, I got to finish, like, gluing everything down in there to make everything stay put. But it's a cute little power supply for a cute little purple drive. So uh, I will uh, button things up here and plug it in and take it for a test drive. All right, we're back. I got some stuff rigged up here. We have the ultimate cartridge that'll be drives eight and nine. And our new little guy here is drive 11. And uh, yeah, before I forget, this uh, this is a little cable I used for the uh, the power cable. This was just like a, a 10 foot long, four pin din patch cable that I cut in half. So I've got a spare or we'll build another one or something, but that came off Amazon for 10 bucks. Just search for a uh, four pin din and uh, he'll, he'll He'll show up for you. So let's uh, boot our happy little machine here. We got the Super Snapshot cart loaded, but let's mount some discs first. And let's see if we can write some stuff to a, a D81 that'll be useful. Uh, so we're going to mount Sonic on the Ultimate 1581 drive emulator in there. So now if we go into Disk Utilities, Disk Copier, and we have to change our mode to Dual 1581. Our source is going to be 9, that's our ultimate cartridge, and our destination will be 11. And let's cross our fingers and see what happens. That sounds like it's working. So uh, it'd be nice if I actually had the two different colored LEDs on the on the 1581, but all I had were reds. I'll have to find a green one and swap it out at some point. So probably just looks like a red blur on there. But we'll let this copy run, and we'll come back and see if it was a success. All right, that really didn't take too long. Actually, it wasn't bad. Probably only took a couple of minutes, and it claims there were no read errors, no write errors, and that copy is complete. So uh, let's bail out of here. Use my little restore mod reboot. And here we're, we'll disable him and get back to basic and let's set our drive to 11 do a directory and that's a good sign looks like everything's there we'll do a load I think the REU is enabled oh no didn't work and we got the flashing error Maybe, I don't know, something went wrong with the copy, or if Sonic just doesn't like being copied in that way. We can, uh, here, we can try it again. Let's, uh, let's use a different source. Here, let's, uh, let's just cold boot them. Let's 
try a different D81 image. What do we want to try and copy? A lot of the stuff is 128 stuff. But I uh, have Geos 2. That might be the 64 version. I have my Nova Term discs. What are we going to use? What are we going to use? Let's use this one. This is my Nova Term that I know works. So let's mount him on drive 9. We'll go disk utilities, copier again. So dual 1581 mode. Source is going to be 9, destination is going to be 11, and copy. Alright, we'll let that run, see if we do better this time. Alright. Supposedly this one worked too, but let's see, let's uh, reset the machine. And we'll disable him and bail out. And let's go to drive 11, get a directory. Well, all the file names are there again. Let's, uh, let's give him hell. Well, that's a good sign. That's what it's supposed to do. Hey, that's a good sign. We got a working 1581 floppy drive. Pretty darn slick, if you ask me. So, uh, some people might ask, why the hell did I do this? You know, I, there's Pi 1541s, the Ultimate Cart. Uh, I've got all that stuff, and it all works, and it's all good. Um, I guess reason one is because I can, and I just enjoy soldering things. I had most of the, uh, uh, you know, the expensive parts for it. You know, I had a spare Amiga drive. I had the uh, the 8520 CIA. I had a 6502. Um, I had to buy the uh, the floppy controller and the uh, uh, static RAM chip, but they were pretty cheap. So, um, and I always wanted one. But the the most important thing is uh, the the reason why I did it anyway is on my 128. I have yet to be able to figure out how to get CPM to load. On, on the Pi 1541 or Pi 1581, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong or I got corrupt images or if maybe it's just not fully compatible with that disk format, you know, the Pi 1541. This is an actual, honest-to-goodness, 100% replica. It's not an emulator. It's not a recreation. Chris did a great job reverse engineering this board. It is a 1581, so... I'm hoping I will figure out how to uh, how to write a CPM disk and uh, actually get CPM booting on the 128. And there again, you might ask, why the hell would he do something like that? And the answer is simply because I can. And uh, I just think it'd be neat to do and, and be able to use that mode on the 128 for one day when I'm bored and I just need something to do. So there you go. A work in 1581. Pretty slick. So... Uh, Thanks for watching. I hope this inspires somebody to go out and build one of these things, too. And uh, if you have any questions, anything, hit me up. Let me know. I'll, uh, I'll be happy to answer. But it's a really simple build. It's a bunch of through-hole components. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. It's a very, very easy build to do if you're even remotely handy with a soldering iron. So good luck on your builds, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you again next time.